Estate Coaching Radio, America's number one trusted resource for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Starring award-winning real estate coaches Tim and Julie Harris. Get ready for unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what is truly working to get you into action and make you money in this new real estate boom. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back to Real Estate Coaching Radio, broadcasting live from drying out Austin, Texas, certainly not as bad Mm -hmm. as Houston. Um, Thank you for the feedback you guys gave us on the show the other day about how to be in contribution, how to be of service to the folks that are affected by Hurricane Harvey down in uh, the Houston area. So thank you for – I know a lot of you guys were uh, making contributions. Some of you had set up um, fundraisers at your churches and your, your brokerages and whatnot. I think it's a fantastic idea. Uh, I will suggest that you guys take it a step further. If you're uh, in anywhere in Texas, but really anywhere in the country, I would strongly suggest you put together a fundraiser this weekend. Do it. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just blast it out wherever. If you're you know, going to church, have the pastor, preacher mention it during service that in the basement or at the wherever you have um, after church activities that there's going to be a canned food drive. There's going to be something. So if your church or if you're brokerage or whatever isn't contributing in that way be the leader so brokerages brokers office managers this is your opportunity to get on the radar of being a leader i promise you guys this stuff matters more than you think um one of the things that julie and i used to do for these types of things that was absolutely unbelievably effective is we would always tie whatever uh charities that we were or i'm sorry whatever charity events we were doing we'd always invite the american red cross the American Red Cross right now is basically on high alert looking for blood donations. matter of fact, Julie and I are going to go out and do blood donations today um, or tomorrow. Julie usually passes out, so <laughs> we have to plan ahead. <laughs> but we're going to, you know, from when we've done blood donations yep. in the past. And I have a super rare blood type, and whenever I give blood, they always are looking, it's like trying to chase me down for more. Vampires everywhere. Um, like like <laughs> vampires, right. They'll call and they'll email, hey, we're doing a blood drive. It's 20 minutes away. And, in town. You know, you have that great trip. And- yeah, I have that. <laughs> I have one of those really weird blood types that essentially is really, you know, I think it's either universal or, you know, anyway. So, anyway, moral of the story, guys, is if you're going to uh, take the lead and be a leader in your community, please do consider um, involving the American Red Cross. Now, there's some side benefits to that, and I'll give you an example. So, Julie and I had this – we talked about this before in the podcast. Hey, October's coming up, so this would be a great thing for you guys to do as well. We had this uh, pumpkin sale. What was it called, John? Julie, pumpkin palooza. Pumpkin fest. Pumpkin, pumpkin fest. fest. Or, okay, think, right. Yeah. So we originally started out doing pumpkin fest in our front yard. We we found some local farmers. We bought a bunch of pumpkins. We put them in our front yard. We did a little neighborhood advertising. We let folks know that we're going to be selling pumpkins for a dollar or whatever. And then we'd appreciate it if they'd also drop off some canned goods and those were going to get donated to the local homeless shelter. That's what we did. And the pumpkin, uh, I think it was called pumpkin palooza. But anyway, when we did it. It was such a huge hit that within, I think, after doing it for a year or two, uh, the local kids loved it. You know, the local moms loved it. They come over to our house. You guys can see what we're doing, putting ourselves in the middle there, letting everyone know that we're actively involved in the community, all the good stuff you guys could do. And talk about feeling good about what you do for a living. Talk about being right in front of folks and being seen the way you want to be seen. There you go. Well, it expanded, and then we wanted to do it at the local um, – elementary school. And so we called up the principal and it was like a 10 minute conversation. She said, absolutely. You can use my parking lot. Uh, and so we did it there for one year. And then, then uh, we involved the American Red Cross. And so here's what the American Red Cross does. And this is the same way it will work in your community as well. Uh, is they showed up and they showed up with uh, a whole bunch of volunteers. They showed up with a whole bunch of gurneys, a whole bunch of nurses, the whole thing. I mean, it, it was literally an as you can imagine, it's the American Red Cross, a massively well-organized or- and orchestrated thing. And they had a line of people, and I know you, don't worry, Julie, I won't forget about the prospecting. They had a line of people that were coming out of the uh, – they set up these gurneys inside the, the school, coming out of the school, pretty much a line of people all day long. People that wouldn't have come to our pumpkin event were there just to donate blood. And um, we got the association. We The pumpkin fest at the point where it was at this um, – 
elementary school got to be so big that we would have we had to end up ordering an 18 wheeler size load of pumpkins that we had dropped off and uh, now we got these pumpkins when we got to that level we had sponsors we had local businesses that were sponsoring starbucks would show up with coffee and we had local businesses would help contribute money when you buy a bunch of pumpkins it's really not that expensive as you guys can imagine it's a perishable thing right but the pumpkins would be all sold usually before the end of the day and it was just unbelievable seeing the steady stream of people coming and, um, and I remember this – actually, I tell you guys the story because I'm actually – I feel bad about this. But So the pumpkin thing was going on. The pumpkins all sold out. And as we were basically – you know, one of the last pumpkins got sold. We had probably a couple thousand pumpkins that a, um, a, a coach, you know, a huge bus pulls in. And one of the local um, old that. folks' homes uh, – yeah, they pull in, and basically they had all gone there to buy pumpkins, and all the pumpkins were gone. And it's like, oh, God, why didn't you guys just come here an hour yeah. earlier? I never, I'll, I felt so guilty about it. But so anyway, the American that. Red Cross, when you involve them in your charity, what they'll do is they will uh, call prospect into the community. Remember I told you guys that they chase me because I have a rare blood type? They chase me like vampires? Well, when you are doing a charity along with them, what they'll do is they'll call prospect, pick up the phone, the very thing we want you people to do. They'll prospect into that neighborhood, <laughs> letting you. them know about the event. Yeah, they'll do it for you. And so our event was called the Tim and Julie Harris Pumpkin, you know, Pumpkin Fest or whatever the name was. We don't remember now. Pumpkin Pe- Fest, Pumpkin Palooza, choose one, come up with your own, but associate your name with it. And so they would prospect into the community, our community, the area that we were you know, primarily focusing on, which is New Albany. And they'd say, we're calling about this pump- or this blood drive you've donated in the past. Would you consider donating again? And guys, they were doing free prospecting for us. And we are associated with a lot of goodness in that whole thing. Are you gonna, The amount of – and we, uh, the local paper comes out every year. It becomes a ritual. It becomes a routine. The first couple of years, it was a little sketchy. People were skeptical. Oh, they're just doing it for real estate and all this other bullshit that people say. But then after a while, people realized it was a thing, and it got bigger, and the community accepted it. And I don't want to go as far as to say it became a tradition in the community, um, but I'll tell you what, it became a tradition in our in, in our world. So consider doing the same thing. Consider doing it this weekend. Don't worry about it if it's not fancy. Don't worry about it if you haven't positioned everything right. Don't look for a l- long list of shit to do. The weekend is the weekend. Go and do something anywhere at your church, any place else. Have fun with it. Put word out on all the social networks. Tr- let the local paper know. People will flock to you because you're being a leader trying to be in contribution to other people. Service. So. That's right. So please don't let this opportunity go by to be of service to other people, and you guys will get massive side stream benefit as a result. So today's show is something unusual. We are going to answer all the questions we've been getting from all of you guys on Facebook and email directly to us. We're going to answer probably the three or four most common questions, the part, the points of confusion as a result of you guys having read our book. Some of you, the book is essentially, as you can read the reviews on Amazon, the book is very clear, very concise, very, you know, it's Julie and I. We're very practical. We're very tactical. We're going to tell you exactly what you need to do to get in action. What our book is not is mystical. What our book is not is fake spirituality. What our book is not is intentionally motivational. It's motivational because you guys are feeling motivated because you know what to do after having read the book. But it's not all this fake, crappy, motivational speaker garbage. And some of you guys are really conflicted about that based on your questions. You guys ask us questions. And we're going to read some of the questions that we've been getting, and we're going to just cut through it, big surprise, so that you guys know exactly essentially the way that maybe you should consider thinking so you're not essentially confused by some of this crap that people are you know, circulating around as being a required thing for becoming successful. Julie and I like to call ourselves the anti-motivational speaker because motivational speakers, for the most part, are absolute snake oil salesmen. <laughs> You know, 99% of the motivational speakers out there, not all of them, are essentially have never succeeded, never accomplished anything in their entire lives, and they have basically are, you know, being fake Tony Robbins. That's what most motivational speakers are. The worst at this are the ones in our real estate industry. And you guys know who I'm talking about, what I'm talking about. They get up there, they do a watered-down version of a Tony Robbins thing. They talk about NLP, they talk about DISC, they talk about all this stuff, and you guys walk out feeling like you've been, you know, 
just you feel a little weird, right? You feel kind of like I kind of think I like what I learned, and then two or three days later, and you don't even remember what they talked about. It's because it was a bunch of crap, and it didn't give you the Temporary. information you need to move your business. For. Yeah, it's all it is is designed to make you feel a certain way. That's all those things are. It's almost like what they're trying to do is whip you into a trance, and you guys have to see it for what it is. All those motivational speakers, if they have studied their craft at all, they literally know how to deliver their message in such a way. They studied how they talk. It's like a good song, right? No, don't bore it. it. Get to the core. Right, there's a pace to it, there's a tonality to it. When you watch Tony Robbins, guys, and you watch how he talks, you watch how he speeds up, slows down, that is all designed to have a psychological effect on you, the same as if you were basically being someone who's trying to hypnotize you or put you put your brain into a certain uh, wavelength that makes you more receptive to his messaging. Okay, if this sounds crazy, I, it, it isn't. I'm telling you an absolute fact. The, all these people that are basically delivering these messages and call themselves motivational speakers, what they literally are trying to do is get in your head and manipulate you to buy whatever it is they also have for sale. That's a fact. I'm just telling you the truth. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drill down on three things that I have gotten a lot of calls or rather emails about, Someone, a lot of versions of the word passion. Okay, that's the first one. A lot of versions of the word balance. And a lot of versions are about essentially procrastination. A lot of you guys are still stuck on the idea that you have to do a whole bunch of other stuff before you can start being successful and before you can start making money. So we're going to cut through all that on today's podcast. Before I jump in, Julie, for the first one, we're going to dispel the whole mythical illusion of needing passion to be successful. But before we do, Julie, do you have anything else you'd like to say or anybody else you'd like to acknowledge? Uh, well, it's funny, you were mentioning the book on Facebook, Julia Kilgore writes, okay, is it just me? When you read Harris Rules, do you hear their voices in your head? Ooh. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, can you tell the, whose voice you're reading? At first, I thought I was just imagining this, but I can tell who is the main speaker in a chapter. I know Tim and Julie wrote it together, but wow, their voices come through loud and clear. So I just wanted to say I appreciate you, Julia Kilgore for, um, <laughs> I guess, hearing our voices in your head. And, and all I always say about that is, like, you know, that's, that's awesome as long as you are doing what we ask you to do and following the rules and really implementing that and being an example to all of your colleagues in your brokerage and in your uh, marketplace. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. And there were some comments. Julie, can, you read, the, can, okay, can you read the one on uh, Amazon that came in from someone named RH? Because that's a great tee-up for our topic today. Okay, as soon as I find – oh, yes, right there. Okay, perfect. Uh, from RH, uh, review on Amazon, the rules Tim and Julie lay out in this book transcend real estate and apply to business and sales in general. Tim and Julie share actionable, tactical, and practical business advice to help you achieve next-level results. I love the fact that they're not just trying to sell another easy button, kind of like what we're talking about today on the podcast. They deliver practical, real-world strategies to achieve the lasting results. Must read for any salesperson or business owner. So thank you, RH, for writing that as a review. We appreciate that. And by the Actually, way, guys, just in case you're curious, these skeptics out there, all of these are genuine reviews. Um, you know, not, all these are reviews from actual uh, listeners um, and actual coaching clients. These, this, so this is the real stuff, guys. And look, we really sincerely appreciate the reviews. Uh, guys, the book is going to be available on Amazon for a 99 cent Kindle download. Remember, Kindle's an app works on any kind of device you have, iPhone, Android, iPad, works on your computer, wherever. Um, and then on the 15th of September, tomorrow, he gad, it's going to go up to 15 or 20 bucks. So make sure you grab it for 99 cents. And we would really sincerely appreciate it if you guys would give us a review. Um, it does mean something to us when we see that what we're saying, and more importantly, how we're saying it. It's helping you guys cut through the bullshit out there and see the truth about what it takes to be successful. Um, so look, we're going to jump right in. One of the first, uh, the, I see this question happen a lot, and I see a lot of people talking about it. And I really, honest to God, guys, on this podcast, I really hold myself back because we have to appeal to the broadest of audience, but I'm really tempted not to <laughs> today on, for these three things because I'd really like to put a point. I'd really like to put a period at the end of the sentence for a lot of you guys with regards to whether you need passion to be successful. Oh, but before I do, I want a quick reminder, too. I almost forgot. When you guys buy the book, you're going to be part of our mastermind that we have starting mid-September. It's a mastermind uh, that Julie and I are going to be providing. It won't cost you a nickel as long as you buy the book during the pre-release phase. And we would certainly appreciate if you'd leave a, a, um, a review. I'm not requiring that you leave a, re leave a review, 
but after you've read a couple chapters, don't just do it because you feel obligated. I want you to actually consume the information to make sure uh, to be sincere and authentic about your review. Okay, so but please do. We just sincerely appreciate it. So look, I'm going to talk to you guys about passion, and I want to be really, really clear about that. And and I'm going to let let's go back in history a little bit. I'm going to give you guys a little history lesson on a lot of the modern mindset NLP bullshit that's out there. So first of all, I want to say that not all that so – most of the stuff has some value to it. Um, NLP, for example, you guys don't know what I'm talking about. I want you to Google it. NLP is essentially what Tony Robbins does. NLP is essentially – sometimes it's called the language of sales. But what NLP is, the history of it in essence was that some professors got together in uh, Big Sur, California, and Julie and I have researched all this back in the 60s and into the 70s. And they decided they wanted to study what it was that made successful salespeople and successful people in general successful. And so what they tried to do is make an art of essentially studying successful people, how they ha held their hands, how they stood, how they talked, how they did embedded commands, how they – all the stuff that basically goes into a successful person. And then they try to monetize it. Okay? By monetize it, they tried to write books. They tried to write courses. They tried to study it. They tried to basically make it so – okay, I like the premise of that original research. Everyone listening probably does. Sounds interesting, right? But what happened to it after that was it became almost like uh, – it, it literally became almost like witchcraft because people started selling watered-down versions or different versions of NLP. Didn't call it NLP of course, they called it something else, and th you know that way they wouldn't get sued for copyright infringement. So then they came out with their own versions of it, and then they tried to make it like a, some sort of mystical thing. And by mystical thing, they tried to make it sound like it, b being successful, learning how to be a great salesperson – is something other than basically the practical and tactical application of skills. So if you guys want to know why you're not motivated, I'll roll into passion in a second. It's very simple. You're not motivated or, or you don't feel energetic and enthusiastic to go after the business because you ha are confused about basically what is required for you to be successful. You think that there's some huge, massive wall. I all of a sudden had that picture of the wall from uh, Game of Thrones that the, you know, the evil <laughs> the dragon just blew down. You, know? you guys have this huge vision in your head that you have this massive, insurmountable wall that you have to uh, you know, cross, and then it will take thousands of years and you know, all these other things in order for you to you – know, it's the same bullshit that makes, it makes you guys believe that you have to work with buyers, then after you – years in the business of tiling around, wasting your life working your with time. tires, that, some, that somehow magically you're allowed to finally work for sell, worth sellers, right? I mean, isn't that what some of you guys have been told? Oh, you don't get to work with sellers until basically you have calluses on your head and you're bald and you're, you know, hating real estate. Then maybe you get a listing, right? That isn't the way it works. That isn't the way it worked for us. That isn't the way it worked for any of you guys who are actually applying the truth. So with regards to essentially all the this, this sort of modern mindset stuff, the history of it all comes from the same era. Uh, NLP comes from the same era. Uh, DISC comes from the same era. All this stuff is fake. It's pseudoscience. Pseudoscience is a smart person's way of saying fake. So I'll just say fake. <laughs> okay? So it's fake science. It's not real. It's not anything you actually have to study. It's not like gravity. It's not a real science. It's not a law. There's no law of reciprocity. There's no uh, universal rule of attraction. None of that stuff is real. It's all fake. Now, look, it's fun to read. It's mental masturbation. That is what it is. But it's not real. So, Tim, you're conflicting with all my you know, decades of belief about what it takes to be successful. Most of the time when you guys hear a motivational speaker speak and they use – I'm rolling into the word passion now – and they'll talk about, oh, you have to have passion – they are taught, these are generally speaking people that have already become successful and rich, and they don't remember the fact that when they were actually on their way up, they had no passion for what they were doing 99% of the time. They were just forcing themselves to do it, and they were motivated by being of service to other people, but they were also largely motivated by the benefit they got for the work that they did, which is money. And now look at this societally right now. People are confused about that. Oh, you have to have passion to be successful. You have to have this overriding crazy feeling of, you know, passion. Bullshit. You don't need passion, people, I promise you. 
You absolutely positively don't need passion. Why? Because passion will betray you. Passion is a temporary emotion. Emotions in general will betray you. Your feelings will betray you. They change. They ebb and flow. If you're only going to work when you feel a certain way, if you're only going to work at the highest level when you feel a certain way, if you're only going to get results when you feel a certain way, if you're only going to basically do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it, when you feel a certain way, if you feel that way at all, it's going to be so fleeting that you're never going to get anywhere with your life. Passion is a word that is used to manipulate people. And here's another big thing. And I love this on our Facebook group. You guys talk about this sometimes. You guys enjoy making fun of the same things we do. Um, in order to, you know, these motivational speakers, you know, you have to have passion or what's your big one thing? It's the same version of the same bullshit. Uh, well, guess what? If my passion is sitting around picking out lint out of my toes, are you telling me the money's going to follow? Isn't that one of the things we're told? If you do what you're passionate about, the money will follow. Haven't we all been told that? Guys, it's a straight up lie. It is. It's a lie. It's just not true. It's one of those feel good things. It's one of those sort of progressive mindset things that came from all those, you know, studies in the, you know, Big Sur, California area from the 60s. You will have passion when you're being of service to other people. Listen to what I'm saying, please. You feel passionate. You will feel that energy. You will feel that spark when you're helping other people. That's where it comes from. When you're creating a product, when you're providing a service, when you're helping somebody else solve a problem, you feel incredible, don't you? You do, don't you? And some of you will say, well, I'm feeling passionate when I'm in that mode. Okay, that's good. But the reality of it was in order for you to get to that mental, emotional state, you had to do what you didn't want to do when you didn't want to do it. I asked one of my coaching clients today, someone who's very consistent at taking listings. I asked him, I said, Ryan, how often do you actually feel like doing, like essentially doing the work that is necessary for you to do every day? <laughs> you know and what he said? Zero percent of the time. None. Never. He never feels like prospecting. Oh, I mean, that, but isn't that the truth? Look, guys, what we're going to ask you to do for the most part, for most of you, is going to suck. It does. I mean, Julie, is that oh, – let's just lay it out, right? Absolutely. It, it does. Right. Going to the gym sucks. Eating – you know, every morning Julie and I have a smoothie that has all this stuff in it. It tastes kind of bad, you know? You know it looks it, bad, it, too, some, for being honest. It, it does. Like it, it looks like ground up or k- Kermit. Exactly. Yeah. So, look, guys, yeah. the reality of it is, is if you want the payoff, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the effort. If you don't have what you don't want, if, if, if you basically are living a life where, you, where, where you're surrounded by things you don't want, you don't like the, your checking account and savings balance, you don't like how you look, you don't like the level of success, you don't like your relationship with your family members, you don't like the, uh, how you are in your career, you, those are all things you have created for yourself. Now, people will use the word manifesting, and I kind of like that. You did manifest all those things in your life by your lack of activities. You are a direct mirror of the uh, person and the thoughts that you had previously. If you don't like who you are now or if you don't like aspects of who you are now or what you're experiencing now, if you don't like – let's make it basic. If you don't like your clothes, your car, your house, your state, all those things in which you live, all those experiences in which you enjoy or sort of mildly you know, put up with, those are all as a result of your willingness to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. And let's be real drilled down on that. What are we talking about? When you look at, for example, someone who's successful versus somebody who's not, it's because the someone who is successful has either consciously or subconsciously realized that their highest and best purpose and use on this planet is being of service to other people. And they've realized that the more people that they can be of service to, the more of everything they're going to enjoy in life. There it is. I just gave you the formula. It's not any more complicated than that. So if you are having a life that you are not thinking is the best version of you, if you're driving some old this and living in some old that and you're you know, not looking like you want to look and you're not living the life you want to live, if you've not traveled the places you want to travel, if you're not enjoying life to its fullest, guys, we're only you know, we only live once and we're dead a real long time, right? If you find yourself living a scaled-back version of what you envisioned for yourself, it's simply for the fact that you have yet to be of service to enough other people. That's it. And some of you guys get resentful because you haven't, you haven't experienced success. You haven't earned it yet. I was on another coaching call with Colin. Colin, I don't know if you're listening. 
And Colin was being envious of another one of my coaching clients that's also in his market. And this other coaching client sells these really expensive houses, you know, big buck houses. And, he, and Colin says, how do I get that business? And I said, you haven't earned that business yet. You don't earn. You haven't earned it. You don't have the skill set for it. No one in that marketplace is going to respect doing business with you because you haven't gotten to the point where you've earned that level of success. But look at we look at this modern civilization, society we live in. People act it. They fake it, and they think then the success will follow. And you know what? Sometimes it does. But if you're faking it, but you're not backfilling it with actually learning how to be of service, you're just basically a fake, and you'll never last. The fake it until you make it thing, a lot of people find that offensive, as long as you understand what it is. If you're acting successful, but you don't actually have the skill set to be of service to other people, then that's wrong. If you're acting like you're successful and actually can't solve somebody's problem, you're lying. But if you're acting successful, looking nice, driving you know, a car that's clean and you know, basically really trying to get your game on, and you're trying to improve how you can be of service to other people at the same time, then go for it. You know, you're faking it till you make it. You're acting like the person you want to be, which I have no problem with, but at the same time you're trying to get your skills on. You're trying to improve. You know, you guys understand, you guys see the conflict a lot of with a lot of thinking. So here's the last one I want to cover in the time we have remaining. And this question comes up all the time in one form or another. And it, here's a, a version of it. I don't have, I just don't have enough time to do it all. I don't have, I, I'm looking for balance. I, it, balance is the word, right? So it's one, sometimes they don't use the word balance in their question. It's a form of the word balance. I want to have, to, I want to somehow <laughs> magically have it so that, you know, my family, my spirituality, my finances, my physical and my educational aspects and goals of my life are all in perfect harmony. And some of you guys torture yourselves when they aren't in perfect harmony. So here it is. Ready? Balance is a lie. It's another one of these mindset bullshit things these motivational speakers have ingrained into the popular uh, ethos of what it takes to be successful. Balance is a lie. The pursuit of balance will make you insane. So why is that true? At different points in your life, you're going to be putting emphasis on different aspects of your life. So, for example, maybe right now, and I assume it's true because you guys are listening to us, maybe right now your focus is on improving your finances. And so you're learning the truth about what it takes to be successful. You're starting to realize these motivational speakers are basically just snake oil salesmen. You're accepting the fact that you need to become really good at your craft so you can earn your success. You need to be worthy of the goals that you're setting for yourself, and you're finding willing to drill down and accept the responsibility for it. That means other aspects of your life are going to be out of balance. It's true. Maybe before you went to the gym every day, now you can only go three days a week because you're focused on your professional activities. Maybe you're not spending as much time with your kids that you'd want to, and you feel really freaking guilty about that. Here's a little way to do that. Um, Johnny and Susie, uh, uh, your daddy's going to be really focused on work for the next uh, 12 months. Daddy's going to be not spending as much time at ballet practice and not spending as many dinners at home with you guys at night. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to help Daddy accomplish the goal because then in 12 months we're all going to go to Disneyland. And then I want you to take a picture of Disneyland. I want you to put it on the refrigerator where everyone can see it. And then trust me when I tell you, the kids will not want to see you. They'll want your ass out there working so they can go to Disneyland. You guys use your families as excuses. You guys use your church as excuses sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. I can't work on Sunday. I can't do an open house on Sunday because I need to spend 12 hours at church or on Saturday or on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You guys come up with all kinds of elaborate, creative excuses because you're trying to stay in balance. You don't earn the success that you seek when you act like that. You literally do not deserve it because you're not realizing the fact that your highest and truest purpose on this planet is being of service to other people. The way to be of service to other people is you have to be of service to enough people. You guys get it? You understand? Look, if I'm slightly offensive or full-on offensive to some of you, I want you to write down specifically what, I was, what you were in conflict with and just email me, and maybe I'll use it as a topic on an upcoming podcast. Guys, move forward. Make this your market. Use this opportunity that you have right now. All of us for some reason, okay? And now this might seem a little pseudoscience-y spiritual stuff, but here it is. For some reason, you guys discovered us. For some reason, we're resonating with you guys. You guys like what we're saying, to not use the word resonating. You guys are uh, – we're, we're talking in the same language. There's something intuitive inside of you that's matching with what's inside of us. 
That's not by mistake. I don't believe that that just happened. You guys somehow, our paths crossed. Maybe you got an email. Maybe you discovered the Facebook page. Maybe you bought the book. Maybe you attended a webinar. Maybe it was a referral from somebody else. Maybe you guys read about us on Inman. Whatever. Somehow our paths have crossed, and we're resonating with you. Please do something with that. Don't just use us to entertain you. Some of you guys listen to us over lunch. Some of you guys, I always think it's funny how you guys will show us pictures of listening to our podcast on your iPad with a glass of wine. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But do something with the information. Don't just use this information to like motivate you, make you feel good. Make it so that you use this information to be of service to other people. If we can educate you, if we can motivate you to take action, to get into service and be of service to other people, we have served our mission on this planet our mission on this planet is to be of service to all of you and if we're of service to all of you at the highest level that we possibly can be which i think you guys will agree we're on our way then you guys will be motivated to be of service to other people but here's the bottom line great way to round off the show today the reason these motivational speakers are mostly full of shit is because all they're trying to do is fill your fill your head with this mystical bullshit and you now realize some of you guys are feeling motivated, but you're not feeling motivated because I filled your head full of mystical bullshit. You're feeling motivated because you realize that there's a practical, tactical way to move your business forward. You're realizing that what I'm asking you to do isn't sit around all day and think about your intention and hoping the universe will deliver it. What I'm asking you to do is be of service to other people. There's not a single person, sociopaths aside, who's listening right now who that does not resonate with. Everybody is happiest when they're helping somebody else. It could be opening a door. It could be solving a problem. It could be helping a seller negotiate a tough contract. All of us want to feel needed. All of us want to feel like we're making a contribution. All of us have this intuitive – it's wired into our DNA to be of service to other people. And when you deny that, you are in conflict with your nature. You're in conflict with the way God made you. And so get back in alignment with that and then do everything it takes – to make it so that you are really good at your craft, which is being a real estate salesperson. Salesperson, salesperson, that's what you are. So become the best version of a salesperson that you can. Richest people in the history of history have always been salespeople. Read The Richest Man in Babylon if you don't believe me. So guys, listen, if there's ever anything we can do for you, email me directly, tim at timandjulieharris.com or julie at timandjulieharris.com. Anytime, for anything, you guys need help, you reach out to us. Members or not. And if you guys need a free coaching call, just go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Now your homework, and just going to be your homework from now through the 15th of September, two things. Tomorrow is the first, so that means there's going to be a lot of expireds. So make sure you're hunting the expireds. Number two, I want you guys to go to Amazon and please buy the book and leave us a review after you've read a couple chapters. If you guys need us for anything, it's Tim at timandjulieharris.com or Julie at timandjulieharris.com. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.